we're back. I'm getting too old. I hurt myself when I jumped that high. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, my name is Jordan. I'm a professional cocktail and spirits brand photographer. Yes, somehow that's a real career. For the rest of you, sorry it's been a little while since I've put out a new tutorial. I've been hard at work releasing my beverage photography e-course, which is, as far as I'm aware, the first photography e-course that is specifically focused on teaching people how to capture cocktails and beverages. But anyway, we're back on the YouTube train and I'm going to try my best to be a lot more consistent with uploads on here. To jump back into it today, we're gonna to get into some whiskey photography and I'm gonna teach you how to make your whiskey bottles glow. All right, so today we're going to be shooting a fairly simple photo of a bottle of whiskey. So I have my set behind me. I have a couple of Ericsson surfaces as my background. One of them is just laid flat on the tabletop. Another one I have upright. It's just sitting on top of a stool and I have a C stand in the back to hold it in place. For today's subject, we're gonna be shooting a bottle of Kentucky Straight Bourbon from Peerless. I got to visit the Peerless Distillery a few months ago, got to check out their whole operation, including their cooperage and where they char their barrels. All of it was such a cool experience. It's really a gorgeous bottle with some really beautiful design details, so this is gonna be a great example. Now for a commercial level shoot where I'm doing some really high res images of bottles where they just have to be picture perfect, I'm likely gonna be using multiple light sources, different scrims and bounces, and then compositing a bunch of different images together. Today, we're gonna to take a little bit more of a simple approach so that you can more easily replicate it at home. Today, we're only gonna be using one light source, one flash. So I have a Godox AD400 Pro over here to the side, and it has a, I think that's a 56 inch strip box as the lighting modifier. And then as you can see, I also have this scrim, which is a very large translucent reflector that I have clipped onto a C-stand. Scrims or translucent reflectors like this are really helpful when capturing bottles because it just helps soften that light even more. So you get a really nice soft gradient highlight on the side of the bottle versus like this hard strip of light if you were just using a soft box. Like I said, with a commercial shoot, I would have other light sources. I'd probably have a rim light, a fill light, probably another light overhead that's just dedicated to illuminating the label on the bottle. But again, today we're just doing the one light, so we're gonna see how that works. So for my camera setup, I have a Sony a7R4 with a 90 millimeter macro lens. If you've seen my other tutorials, you'll notice that's kind of my typical setup in here. Of course, I have my wire wireless trigger on the hot shoe so I can control my flash wirelessly, mounted on a tripod, and then I also have this wireless remote trigger plugged in so I can control my camera and shutter release wirelessly. The reason for the wireless shutter release is because I need my camera to stay completely still because part of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do a simple two image composite. Now again, it's not gonna be this really crazy complex commercial shoot where you're combining 20 different images in Photoshop with all these different layers. It's gonna be something that you can easily replicate at home, but it requires us to have our camera locked off on the tripod for it to not move, so it's best to have a way to where you can trigger your shutter without touching it or moving the camera. Remote shutter release things are fairly inexpensive. I'll link to the one that I'm using. It's also great to have a good tripod for this. Unfortunately, I see too many people who have nice cameras and nice lenses and then mount it several feet in the air on a very cheap $20 tripod. Not recommended to do that. You're allowed to skimp on the shutter release remote, just get the cheapest one you can find, but you're not allowed to skimp on the tripod. Get a good one, I'll link to some options below. So let's take our first test photo here. Once again, be very careful of your tripod and your camera. Try not to touch it or bump anything around it. Uh, I have my flash at full power, one over one, because it's firing through multiple layers of diffusion. And then I have my camera at one over 250 for the shutter speed, apertures at F8, and then ISO is at 400. So let's take a photo, see how that looks. So there's the shot, and as you can see, that's not half bad for just having one light. 
Uh, the reflection on the side of the bottle is nice and soft. That's because of this diffuser panel. If we were to take that out, the highlight would be uh, pretty harsh just from having that strip box there. So having a scrim or diffuser panel really helps to get that softer, just nicer looking highlight. It could use some fill light on the other side of the bottle. So I'll probably put a little tabletop V flat just to get a little bounce light to illuminate the label a little better. It's not gonna be perfect, but once again, we're going for simple and attainable, something that you can recreate at home without having a bunch of different lights. So here's another shot with the V-flat, so you get that bounce light. It doesn't perfectly illuminate the whole label, but it is a lot better than the previous one. Since we're shooting with a white background here, as you can see, we get some bounce light from that background, which helps the whiskey in the bottle to glow a bit. Maybe this is just a personal preference thing, but a pet peeve of mine is seeing photos of whiskey bottles, or really any spirit for that matter, where the liquid in the bottle looks dark, where it just doesn't look very appetizing or inviting. It just looks so much better when there's a subtle glow behind it. So with the white background, no problem. The light from the flash bouncing off the background does help the liquid stand out in the bottle, but where it changes is when we use a darker background. So we essentially have the exact same wooden chevron background as before, except now it's in a dark finish instead of a white one. So when we take a photo using the exact same exposure settings, you'll notice we no longer have that glow behind the bottle. And as you can see, there's that dark liquid I was talking about. It doesn't necessarily look bad here, but it more just looks like maple syrup more than whiskey. So now we wanna figure out a way to get that glow back even with a darker background. Now I didn't do this with the light background photos. I probably should have because it probably would have made that glow even better. But when I'm doing bottle photos like this, I flip the bottle around and I remove this back label. That just allows for more light to come through behind the bottle so we can get that glow we're talking about. It takes a little bit of work because these labels don't uh, like to come off very easily. So you might wanna take a razor blade. Be very careful though. I have a little plastic scraper. It's just a little safer. So you wanna take off that label, maybe take some goo gone to it to get all the sticky stuff off, and then you're ready to shoot. Hopefully you're still with me, but now that we have the back label of the bottle removed, I'm now setting up to get that first image of this two photo composite. So I'm just making sure my bottle looks good and that it's cleaned off with a microfiber cloth so there's no dust. And for me, since I'm using this chevron background, I'm making sure the bottle is perfectly in the middle of one of those chevrons because that would be a bummer to pull this photo into Lightroom or capture one afterwards and be like, ah, oh, like it's kind of off center from the background. So make sure you're looking for stuff like that. Okay, so now it is looking how I want it to look. So I'm gonna take my first photo for this composite image. Now from this point on, you want to once again, be extra careful to not bump anything, to not move the bottle because you're gonna do a second image that you're gonna composite with the first one and you want everything to line up perfectly. So you just wanna make sure not to move anything. All right, so that shot for the purpose of this exercise looks good to me. We're gonna go with this as our first image. Next, we're gonna work on getting our bottle to glow again. So to do this, you can either use another white V-flat. I have some reflective cardstock. So I have gold and silver on hand. I just got these, uh, I think I just ordered them on Amazon or got them from a local craft store. You can get big packs of them and I just have them kind of everywhere in my studio and I usually have a few pieces in a camera bag as well. So what we're gonna do with these, and we might try a few different ones. I also have some that are a little more kind of bent up with creases in them um, and I'll show you like that can kind of be fun to use too. But what we're gonna do with these is set them behind the bottle like this, and I'll stand on the other side of the table, the light from our flash will bounce off one of these highly reflective surfaces into our bottle, giving the liquid that glow again. But this is kind of where the art of it is because there is a bit of a balance. You don't want to just blind the camera with one of these because otherwise it just looks really fake if you just have too much glow behind the bottle. So we're gonna try a few different things, a few different angles and see what works for this shot. So first I'm gonna try the gold card here and I'm gonna put this probably just, you know, two or three inches behind the bottle 
hold it at a slight angle so it can catch the light from my flash. And let's see how that looks. Ooh, okay, so that level of glow from the gold card looks pretty good to me, even on the first try there. I like that it's a little bit of a gradient. It's not like a consistent brightness throughout the whole bottle. It kind of is bright on that one side and then it falls off closer to the flash. Uh, so yeah, I, I really like that look, but of course we're gonna try a few different options. I'm gonna do the gold card again, but I'm gonna try some slightly different angles, maybe move it closer to the bottle, a little further away, see how those look. You'll see on some of these images that the bottle has like a dark line along the side. So not a fan of those ones, probably won't use any of those shots, but a few of these are turning out pretty nice. Next, I'm gonna try the silver card. Usually I'll use a gold card with gold liquid, but sometimes silver looks a little better or a little different. Just depends on what I want. So I am mostly cleaned up here because next we are going to be pulling out the MacBook and I'm gonna show you how to combine these images in Photoshop. But first, something that's really nice to have when you're editing photos is a good cocktail. So since we happen to have some quality bourbon lying around, I'm thinking we should make an old fashioned. Now we have our old fashioned to help us out while we edit. I have all of our files loaded up on my external hard drive and I'm opening them up in Photoshop now so we can do our composite. So here is our first image, which is the bourbon bottle on the dark background, but once again with the very dark unappealing liquid. So that is the first layer in Photoshop here. So if I hide that layer, you'll see the second one under it that I'm going to composite with that first one. Uh, I did quite a few different shots with the gold card. I thought I was gonna use one of those, but turns out I just like this option with the silver card a bit more. So as I turn this top layer on and off, you'll see that the two layers line up perfectly. The bottle or label doesn't move around at all. So I did a good job of keeping the camera perfectly still and not moving the bottle. This just makes it a lot easier with putting these layers together. Sometimes you do end up moving your camera a little bit on accident and it's not the end of the world. You can kind of go in and line up the layers in Photoshop. Once again, this is more of the simple, easy way of doing this. If I was actually shooting this for Peerless, uh, I would build into the proposal for that project budget to just hire a photo editor. I'm not the best uh, Photoshop master, not a master at all actually. So once again, simple and easy, which is always nice. What you wanna do is make sure your top layer is the image of the bottle without the glow, and then you have the glow underneath. So select your top layer, and then you're gonna go down here and select layer mask, which creates a mask here. And then you're gonna go over and find the brush tool. So on the brush tool, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the color is on 100% black. I'm gonna zoom in a little closer here so we can get a better look at what we're doing. Essentially what we're doing with this layer mask is when we use the brush tool and put it on 100% black, we're basically erasing part of this top layer to reveal the lower layer. So as I paint with the brush here, you'll see that second layer start to show through only where I'm painting. So you wanna just carefully paint around where you want that glow to show through. And sometimes you might paint a little too far over the edge, like now you can see a little sliver of the silver card on the edge of the bottle. So all you have to do is switch the brush over to 100% white, and then you can kinda of go in and fix the mask so it doesn't show that part. You can, of course, zoom in even closer and adjust the brush size, the feathering, and just get really precise with this. You can also make a selection of the bottle so you get a nice hard edge and you could brush all the way over to this side and you won't have to worry about showing the silver card. 
But if you shoot it right and everything lines up perfectly like I showed you, then this method is actually really quick and painless. Now we're gonna zoom out and check it out. I mean, that looks pretty cool to me. Go over to our layers panel here and if you option click on the layer mask, you can see exactly where you painted. So as you can see, just did that black brush right above and below the label just to make that nice glow come through and make the liquid look way more nice and inviting. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, hit me up in the comments. And then if you try a shot like this, I would love to check it out. Post it on Instagram, tag me so I can see it and possibly even reshare it. Okay.